Hey Alex, uh, sorry for the video quality of this interview uh, because the lightning in my room is, is shitty, but due to some personal reasons, I couldn't go to the office to make a higher quality uh, video. Anyways, I'll, I'll go through your questions one by one. Uh, sorry if I will repeat my thoughts and, and throw these questions because I saw as I first took a look at it, I saw that there might be some, you know, repeating things on it. Anyways, uh, what do you know about Serbian Derby? Uh, I know that this Derby is a special game in Belgrade. It has special meaning in European basketball uh, as well. A lot of basketball people, including myself, we would for sure rank it in the top three of all the derbies. To be honest, since I had the personal experience to um, experience it by myself, I think it's the most hostile derby uh, in entire European basketball, especially right now when you have two so competitive and I would say close teams. Uh, they're, they're matching each other, the, the level, the intensity and uh, a lot of big names on both uh, groups. Uh, so Partizan and Srebrenica as well as the game is, is huge, uh, huge for sure. There's a lot of history behind it. There's probably a lot of politics behind it. And for us outsiders, it's actually hard to understand the real meaning and importance and all the emotions that are boiling uh, up all the time uh, behind and around these games. This Serbian derby is just not just a basketball game. Uh, it's 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 something more, obviously something else. Because I, again, you know, as an outsider, I try to look at this derby from a basketball perspective. But when I try to dig in, when I try to understand this passion and hate between two groups, I understand that it's 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 not just basketball. It's related to a lot of different uh, things which are really hard to understand for us outsiders so yeah have you ever been on that game yes i had a, a privilege opportunity uh, to go to witness serbian cup radivoja korac cup uh, final in 2022 uh it was uh serbian as well as partisan uh, fighting each other with both fans in the stands which is a unique thing because only in cup game you have uh, both fan groups inside the same gym. And I mean, the best word to describe my impression was the intensity. Not just the intensity of the game, but the intensity of the crowd. I, I mean, I traveled around a lot of different venues in the entire Europe also, and the entire world, including NBA, like Olympic Games, uh, World Cups, uh, etc. I never felt that kind of intensity and it starts from fans it starts from this you know tenacious atmosphere you can you can feel some uh i would say um some nervous uh around the game not just because who will win tonight who will be better but if there won't be any incidents if everybody will be safe uh, how to grant the safety of, of both teams and all the participants. Uh, it's like a ticking bomb. And you never know if, if that bomb will explode during the game. Uh, to be honest, uh, my experience was, was perfect. There were no incidents except from one flare, which was thrown to Cervena Zvezda Tribune, Tribune, I guess. Uh, but other than that, no big incidents, no fights. Uh, I think that teams didn't even leave benches for the locker room. So it was pretty friendly uh, derby, I would say. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I will for sure remember that game for the rest of my life. And I will tell the stories about that game for, for, my, for my kids, for my grandchildren, because... It was a unique experience meeting all those fans before games, hearing all those stories about gas stations after games, uh, about what you can expect uh, during the game. I mean, it was one of the kind of experiences. Can you compare Serbian basketball derby and something with something we have in our sports or rivals in those sports? I doubt it. I really, 
mm, doubt it. I mean, everybody is talking about Panathinaikos Olympiakos Derby. I haven't been there. I haven't been in their game. I'm, I've been to both arenas, but ha I haven't watched live those games. Um, I believe, I still believe it's a little bit different. Uh, I still believe it's a little bit different. Of course, I wasn't there in a roughest period uh, of, of this uh, experience uh, when teams were, when the fans were fighting each other, when it was really uh, bad. So, okay, I will start uh, from the beginning. Can you compare Serbian basketball derby with something we have in other sports or rivals in those sports? I cannot. I cannot. Uh, of course, I have to be honest, I haven't witnessed Olympiakos Panathinaikos games live. Uh, I haven't witnessed Fenerbahce Galatasaray games live. So this partisan Red Star game was the first uh, from all those big derbies. Uh, I would say I'm not even comparing it with Jargi de Stritas. It's it's a whole different conversation. You know, Red Star Partisan is a much bigger game. So, uh, really, uh, I think it's 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 a unique uh, derby, especially unique for, for basketball. You can say something about football. There are a lot of stories, and I get it. I get it. But in basketball, this is the reason why we decided uh, to travel uh, uh, to, to Serbia last year. Uh, to cover the Serbian Cup final because I was anticipating that for sure Partizan and Cervena Zvezda, they will face each other in the finals. And it was our first uh, season as basketnews.com. And of course, we have this idea to cover all the derbies, to tell the stories for the outsiders, how it is, uh, uh, what kind of experience you're getting witnessing these kind of games. Uh, but I mean, it was clear, it was obvious. We were not considering Olympiakos Panathinaikos there, but we were not considering Barcelona Real Madrid. We were not considering Fenerbahce Galatasaray. Partizan Cervena Zvezda was on the top of the list. It was a no-brainer uh, to visit and to experience it. What do you think? What is so specific about it? Yeah, so the main things which I already mentioned is the intensity in the crowd, uh, how hostile uh, it is. And in a lot of uh, arenas and a lot of games, you saw people throwing things out. But even though those teams are getting fined big amounts, all those teams are getting punished. It's 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 getting repeated year and year and year after. Uh, so so yeah, this is I think this is the most hostile uh, derby experience in European basketball. Uh, intensity, politics uh, behind it. I, I have no clue about politics between behind those two teams, but talking to people, you know, getting to know them better, getting to know both camps better, you 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 see that it's 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 way beyond basketball. Uh, what else can I could I add? Um, pr pride behind those games. Um, both teams, of course, partisan case is a bit different right now, but both teams they have. Uh, local players who know the importance of, of these games and I believe that they explain the foreigners how important this game is and probably foreigners can feel through their eyes, uh, through the local players' eyes, through, through their emotions through their body language how different that game is, what it means uh, for them probably you cannot say the same when you're visiting Barcelona and Real Madrid, maybe in Madrid's case is different, but Barca for, for the past few years, they didn't have many local players. But when I was uh, visiting Partizan Red Star, I mean, especially Red Star with, with Nikola Kalinic, uh, all the other guys, I mean, you, you could feel it's, it's, it's huge. It was huge for them. Uh, what is the image of partisans and Zvezda's fans in your country? Do you think it's just a passion or maybe they cross the border sometimes with it? Uh, to be honest, <laughs> actually, every time uh, there is some violence in Lithuanian basketball games, mostly Jalgi de Siritas, because in all the other games, they don't have that kind of intensity and emotions. The level of emotions and, and uh, hate between teams is, is way different. It's, it's nothing. But Every time there is some violence, 
every like three, four, five years, but I'm talking about some minor violence. Everybody just starts joking that, oh, now we're like Serbians. Now we're like partisan Red Star. Uh, so probably this is the, uh, this is the picture of both team fans in Lithuania. Uh, we respect a lot how loud are your fans, what kind of atmosphere they create. And I would say Belgrade, both teams, both of their fans, they're on a wish list of every geek basketball fan in Lithuania, uh, you know, to, to, to visit, to experience, to, to get the feel of these derbies, to, to visit these gyms. So Partizan Rest are, uh, I, I know one of my friends, one of our colleagues is actually just visiting by himself the game just to experience that, that atmosphere. Uh, so we respect the um, both fan bases, how loud, how how um, supportive you are for your teams, how passionate you are about, about the game. But I can say that there's still this, you know, feeling that usually it goes over the limits and it should be and it could be different. Uh, we're watching those examples in the early games between Panthinaikos and Olympiakos, for example. There are a lot of different tools, like nets, uh, security, better security, honest security, I would say, to grant, uh, to make sure that everybody will be safe in the building, in the big, in, in the building, I'm sorry. Uh, I think that both fan bases should understand that those players, those coaches, those referees, nobody deserves uh, to be treated like, like some animals. Uh, I mean, put yourself in, in these players' shoes. In your job, in your office, you wouldn't like to see uh, some customers throwing things at you. But whether you're working in telecommunication services and there is some unhappy customer and he starts throwing things at you. Uh, nobody would like to hear people chanting, uh, throwing things, being hostile towards you in the street. So always follow the rule, you know, treat the other the way you you wish to be treated. So these these players, no matter what kind of politics they are behind, no matter what you believe, uh, these players don't deserve it. And they're uh, like actors of this beautiful show which the game of basketball is. And you can boo them. You can do everything in your power, which is not going off the limits, uh, you know, to distract them from making shots, from reaching the success in your home gym, uh, whistling, booing, uh, chanting for your team, making the pressure. Everything is great. Everything is awesome. And I, I believe that, you know, if you just have this complex of things, you're already amazing fans. It's not needed at all to go beyond limits and to be uh, hostile, uh, to be violent, and to make the basketball arena insecure for everybody. Uh, not just players, not the participants, but for yourselves as well, if, especially if both fans are uh, involved. I believe I, I'm not going to be popular with this opinion, uh, in Belgrade uh, but at the end of the day this is just the game and even though this derby is special uh, at the end of the day we should remember that this is all of the game and nobody deserves to be treated like that and I hope that one day uh, we will experience this amazing partisan and servant as well as the game experience um, just as basketball fans not not something more uh, without something which goes beyond basketball. I might get in trouble with these kind of statements, but I hope it was well. Uh, okay, thanks. Thanks, Alex. And I hope everything will be okay. If not, let me know.